What can I do? He said, eh, you know what other people are doing? What are other people doing? I don't know. So he will tell you, ah, go and ask. Dr. Boniface, former sub dean, faculty of arts, Unilag senior lecturer, first queer pastor, caught on camera for sexually harassing a 17 year old girl seeking for admission into University of Lagos. We are here to get people's opinion on what really happened. We are here to share experiences. I don't want to call his name. I should you, you, can, you can call his name if, if you want. I should actually name and shame. You can tell us about that your experience. Tell us uh, just a bit. Well, I just say, sir, please. State whatever might have happened to them, how they were able to cope such menace while they were in school. And what do they think should be done to curtail this menace? I want you to stay glued by subscribing and turning on the notification so you get to know when next we drop a video. Alright, let's go on a ride. Have you ever had any sexual abuse? Like have any experience or have someone or have you abused someone? I have not had any experience but my roommate was a victim. Way back in school she was. And she Tell us a bit about that. She said she needed to pass a course. Uh, which of the course she wasn't good with GNS so I was supposed to she told me to write help her write the exam I was like ah babe I beg I know I'm begging for my head because I'm not really good with writing for others the most I can do for you is while I'm writing if you're smart enough you can just dub from it I won't cover up and all that that's for me to go and start writing exam for you I won't do that so I told her and she was like okay there's another alternative that the owner of the course is asking that um, some money be paid. If you can afford that money, you should give me your body in exchange. And I don't really know how she ended up doing that. But she came out with um, C. And I know she didn't write that exam to pass. I think that case has been going on for a very long time. I mean, I graduated 2002, okay, I studied mass comm. And even, let me give you an example. There was this lady who were classmates in school. Up to now, she doesn't have a certificate. Do you know why? The HOD of my department wanted the data. She refused. She didn't graduate with a degree. Um, I won't say sexually harassed, but there's a point of harassment, yes, um, where there's victimization, uh, picking on uh, female students who they look like they don't have anybody to defend them. So, yeah, there are quite a couple of cases. So sometimes it's beyond being sexually harassed. There are other forms of harassment. Yeah, bullying. Bullying. Yeah, yeah, by lecturers. Yeah, so yes, I was bullied, but I don't know because of my countenance, it didn't really transcend to sexual harassment. But it would have led to that if it wasn't coped earlier. But there was that part of bullying whereby a female student, one lecturer is always picking on you, always like there was a point whereby practically every time we meet, it's always I ending up in his office, kneeling down and begging that then can I have my ID card and all that. He will always find something to point me or pick me out for which I may have suspected to turn to sexual harassment but then I just reported it earlier. Um, he he tried to take advantage of the situation I was in because I got um, I had a little misunderstanding with my supervisor so he tried to take advantage of me and when I did not um, agree to his advances he he tried to sabotage my defense but somehow Thank God, some way, some way, I'm, I still managed to escape him. But if not for some lecturers that intervened, I don't know. I really, I really, really don't know how things would have turned out. The school I went to was a bit um, strict because if if something like that gets to the VC, that lecturer is gone. So what, what school is that? I think only Ajashi University, Akumba Akoko. So it was um, you hardly you hardly hear something like that, except if the students they are the one going to this lecturer for Mark and all that. But apart from that, never had such experience. The case you had was it something? Um, was he like through a negotiation or was he trying to force you something? It was not a negotiation. But then again. Okay, tell us about that your experience. Tell us uh, just a bit. About it. Like you don't want to talk about it. So it seems very horrible. It seems very horrible. I've been sexually harassed, but I was not victimized. Okay, so can you tell us about the experience? Well, most times it happens when you have an issue with a cause and maybe you, the lecturer sent for you or you go there yourself 
Because if you're not doing well in the course, okay, tell us in particular how yours happened. How did he approach you and how did it happen? Well, I was called, I was called by the course advisor that you are not doing well in these courses and these are mandatory courses that you need to, you need to pass to go to the next level. What do, how are you going to go about it? So that is where the negotiation starts from. And there and there, they will just stand up from their seats and they want to, they will want to show you what other people do. That's where you have to use your discretion and say, sir, okay. So what, what did you do? Well, I just say, sir, please give me some time. Let me go and see. And I left. I think I had a course. I failed that course several until they let me go. So that's just it. I worked hard after some time. I passed it and that was it. I can give you an example that as a comedian, he's a very popular comedian. Don't want to mention his name. He didn't have his degree certificate. He studied arts in my own um, I school in IMT. Okay. Now, because he submitted, you know, if you're an art department, you know, you do art work to submit as an assignment. So the lecturer said he wants that particular work. And he said no, that he'll give him a, he will give him that he has somebody that he wants to sell it to. Because of that, that course was omitted. He didn't have his degree. Claimed the drunk. He didn't have his degree. Would you, that is another way of, you won't call it sexual harassment. That is one thing, one of the operations the lecturer has to give. He didn't have his degree. I'm telling you, Link the drunk didn't have his degree. He's my friend. What do you actually think should be done? Um, I think one of the measures that should be done is female students should dress properly. Some female students are actually at fault too. I think one way to cope it is the ladies also have to, you know, have decency in their dressing, you know, sometimes because sometimes that is what causes it. You know, I, th th there's always this sexual appeal, you know, in the way they dress. You know, the, 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 lang the language speaks negative and then lecturers that also have such mindset will tend to do that. It doesn't mean you don't, you look good, fine, but you don't really have to be dressed seductively to class because most of the students are the cause of your problems. That's the truth. Some of them, you know that this lecturer, this, even if the normal girl should be properly dressed, decently dressed to class, but most of us will want to wear clothes that shows our cleavages, the ties and everything. What do you expect at the end of the day? First of all, I think, I think we need to take a holistic view at the, at, like I said earlier, as the system. They need to take a holistic view at the system and then look at, understand the reason why this is happening in the first place. Students pursuing lecturers, lecturers pursuing students, it all comes down to, because there is no transparency in terms of grading, there is no, um, uh, no accountability, very little accountability and then you can't really, so many things are not brought into light. I don't think the onus should be on the students. It should be on the lecturers. Control yourselves. It is like the students should not do like as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, as long as you're coming to class, doing assignments, getting your your grades, the lecturer the lecturers they they actually owe it to you to teach you and to do everything they can to help you pass, not to make things difficult for you so it should be on the lecturers i think um just being a good student number one then the fear of god and um, this most of these lecturers when you um is when uh, I, I think when they feel like you want something like mark and all that that's that's when they bring something like that up but if you they know that this student is hard working it's like you do read your book and all that they they don't it, I, I don't think they will actually approach you. And most of them, you just turn them to for like, you, know, you just turn them to your 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 school fathers. Well, first of, I think in the first place is to talk to someone, talk to the right people, talk to the right people. If you want to get something done, talk to the right people. Who are the right people in the school? The right people, um, definitely, they are still good people. Talk to a female lecturer. Talk to. Um, they are still. I, I don't want to believe they are still, they're not credible people that you can talk to. They are credible people that you can talk to. Your student body that you can talk to. Use the pre, use um, social media to talk, but just get your voice out there because silence is what is making this thing become normalized. Say something. Say something. Do something. But say something. Say something. Document it. Have it written somewhere. Have it that you reported it somewhere. Even if you might not, you it's still 
whether if they do something about it or they don't do something about it, but say something at least. Have it on record that you complained. And more of, it will ease your conscience that you, you did say something rather than just staying silent. It's, it's like giving your passive agreements to whatever is happening to you. All right, this is still giddy feet. Say something and do something to ease your conscience. That's what she said. We've heard a lot from different people, different opinions and different experiences. It has gotten to a point that we, we've come to accept it. Like, as a girl, there are things you need to do and there are things you don't need to do to escape this. It's just something we should know is on alarming level. It's something we should know that something has to be done about it ASAP. And then we are calling on whoever that is in charge, whether in schools, vice chancellors, or whoever, wherever on a day, whether in our school, a government officials, or any place where on a day, something has to be done immediately. My name is Kevin Black, and I hope to see you next time on Giddy Fit. Please follow us on all social media platforms on Giddy Fit News, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel below at Giddy Fit.